Welcome SEO survivors to weekly integral factor. We got four new gorgeous skills this week. They are both birthday banners for Asuna and Shirika respectively alongside a selection order and a new hunt event among some other minor things. Kind of a mild week if you think about it but it's an expected one that's how we usually roll following a new floor release. And as usual, Weekly Integral Factor is brought to you by my channel merch. Link for the posters, shirts, hoodies and stickers like the first day or the land squad are down below in the description. So let's start with that selection order. First off, it seems like the rerun banners are back on the beginning of the week following the maintenance. Could be just for this week considering the other two banners are day specific birthday banners coming later this week But I hope they switch it back next week again There's nothing more underwhelming than logging in after a weekly reset and seeing a rerun banner Either way autumn colors selection order feature skills that are themed around Yeah, autumn quite self-explanatory a pool guarantees a four star drop for a full list of available skills, please check the in-game order page. Next up is the new monthly hunt event. The mermaid hunt is live featuring tons of arcana gems, medals, memoria nighters and more where you'll be fighting the lively mermaid. Let's start with rewards. Here are the trader exchange rewards where 300 arcana gems will be coming from. And these are the total cumulative score rewards that are available where 700 of the arcana gems are going to be coming from. If you do the gaining ground every day, this usually is perfectly achievable without any issues. And chances are, even if you're not powerful enough, you'll find a party to run it with as long as you're doing it right after the daily reset every day. That's when the activity is at an all time high. But to make it easier for yourself, equip certain skills that boost your score. Here's a list of the bonus skills for this event but you can see them much more easily in the game with their illustrations. Upon trying to enter a stage the game will warn you with the list of skills as well as providing you an exclamation mark if you have a skill in your inventory but don't have it equipped so make sure that you do. Even if you don't use those skills put them into your secondary set and they will count for the bonus score. As for the boss the lively mermaid it is weak to slash and wind again with no resistances. It's a surprise because last month's ogre hunt was also slash and wind so you can keep using the same setup if you want to without any issues. The only difference is that the break is achieved via swords rather than dagger this time around but my experience with the ogre has generally been that people just burn the boss before a break is needed anyways. Watch out if you'll go for the extreme difficulty down the line however as the weakness will change to thrust and fire and resisting everything else so you'll need to change your entire setup to not get a double resistance against you which is kind of a must in endgame content. But with all that out of the way, happy hunting SEO survivors. Moving on. Rabbit Fever is back where Ragu Rabbit family will be appearing twice as often and will hang around double the amount of time it usually does. If you're interested in refinement things, which I am not at all interested in, this is a good chance for you to farm a bit. Chaos Dungeon Rotation is here, this is the armor you'll need beyond level 100 equipment farmable via the dungeon in the Black Iron Palace. Here are the currently available bosses, you can challenge up to level 135 version with a party, so find some helpful people and thank them for carrying you afterwards, as I always thank all those amazing people who carry me in return. Alright, it's time for those gorgeous birthday skills. Asuna's birthday is on September 30th featuring two new illustrations. Don't skip this one just because you're not a rapier user, a sword user can gain some nice benefits from one of these skills as well, you'll see when I talk about the skills in detail in a second. First step is 50% off, second step has a higher drop rate for birthday asanas and step 3 has an even higher rate for birthday asanas and one 4 star asana guaranteed, not necessarily a birthday asana. Vice Commander's Break Asana is a rapier skill without an element but that doesn't really matter. At max limit break it does a measly 480% damage to a single enemy in a single hit. Pretty tame, pretty lame if you ask me, but that's probably because it is more of a mod fodder than a skill you'll want to use actively. Its mod bonus gives you a plus 1500 attack against enemies that do slash damage and it also provides a 600% increase in crit activation if you modded it to a non-elemental skill. And of course, this ties in with the third bonus that is increasing your crit damage by 30% for each Asuna skill record equipped in the same set. 
all of those come together for a massive blow on the mod skill you have this equipped to, so make sure to use it strategically. Such a huge boost however comes at the price of 3 mod slots of requirement, so it's gonna be much harder to slot it in. If you're looking for a place to slot this one into, well, Inherited Technique Asna is the immediate fit for that Asna skill though. This one too is a rapier skill without an element and is a mod skill with up to 3 slots. At max limit break it does 1980% damage in 11 hits to a single enemy, that's Mother's Rosario for you, and gives a 50% damage block for 4 seconds. Clearly the devs intended you to slot the previous skill into this one, benefiting from every single bonus it offers. While the skill is very powerful on its own already with 1980% damage, it still has mod bonuses should you want to have a different use from it. Its mod bonus provides a 200 bonus attack for each Yuki skill equipped in the set and a 30% increase to damage if slotted on a non-elemental skill. So if you're not a rapier user, you can still get a nice use out of this one as a for example sword player with lots of Yuki skills. With Asuna birthday out of the way, we're moving on to the Shilika birthday skills. Come in October 4, same as Asuna steps, 50% discount, then a higher drop rate for Shilika birthday skills, and even higher drop rate for Shilika birthday skills with a Shilika guarantee, not necessarily the birthday skills. Escape in the nick of time, Shilika is a passive ability. At max limit break, it grants a 100% increase to healing items and field object healing. It also increases your attack by up to 40% when you're above 80% HP. And when your HP is below 50%, it recovers up to 5% plus 200 of your HP every 3 seconds. I'm still using an early Shilika that grants bonus attack when HP is above 80%, and this seems like a far superior version of that one with additional effects so I may just pull from this banner for an upgrade on that one. On the other side, moving on to the weapon skill, Leap into the Future Shilika is a Wind Element Dagger Connect skill. It does up to 1730% damage to a single enemy in a single hit. It also grants up to 50% damage reduction on the next hit you receive, which will last 20 seconds. Its connect skill grants bonus attack if you have wind skills in connection and if you have two or more Kirito skills equipped in your skill slash ability set, the connections also get an even larger wind element damage boost, so quite a luxurious dagger skill over here. But all of that brings us to the end of this weekly integral factor. Looking forward to the new hunt event, although I could use some pulls for bonus points, the previous week's last collection banner continues to elude me. And those upcoming birthday skills are definitely not something to ignore, pretty good stuff in there. Make sure to leave a like and subscribe for more, huge thanks to all members and patrons as usual, and until next time, stay cool.